okay, if we didn't change the default uh, combiner set, we are going to have the first, uh, the, our diffuse channel that will be uh, combined with our second one using multiply. And this will give us uh, the effect of the shadow map. So basically here, we're going to select everything again, make sure that, and we're going to keep the same setting for, <coughs> for the texture size. Make sure that we specify a value greater than 1 and say that our channel will be uh, 1. Select everything and I'm going to switch for UV image editor so we'll be able to see the difference. And execute the script once again. And we see that this time only the shadow map have been baked. Now this is the result on my layer 2. And I'm going to delete this scene since I don't need it anymore. If I go back in my first layer and go back on button, we can see that here we got a new texture that have been added, that it's my shadow map for my plane. And if I go in editing, make sure my object is selected, I'm able to see that a new UV layer and a new image have been linked okay, to that uh, UV texture here. So I'm having two. So what I'm going to render is going to be the result of this one combined with this one. And now I'm going to rename my camera again before I forgot. Okay, nice. Select everything and go back to my exporter. Export and I'm going to go dump it in data as I did previously. Select, export, okay. <coughs> and I'm going to run. You can see that now we basically have the exact same result as before except that here it's you can obviously see that our axis here it's a lot more sharp than it was because what happened is we have one shadow map that it's applied uh, on the on top of the diffuse so basically all our textile are the exact same one as we used previously in our uh, UV editor in Blender but now Okay, it's looking good because we're not that far from the scene. But what is going to happen if we got, uh, you know, like more... <clears throat> is it stopping? Okay. We got more complicated object or like if we were baking like Suzanne or something. If you're going far, since mid map is on, okay, as far as we're going with the camera, the mid mapping, okay, level will change. And this might cause that you're going to have some cracks. You're going to see that cracks will appear okay when you're going far uh, far away of the object there's really an easy way to be able to fix that if I'm going on my plane that is selected here and on my texture I'm simply going to disable mid mapping for my shadow map I'm going to go on the cube and do the same thing <coughs> so now we have fixed that problem that even if the camera the, the camera is going like more far we're going to have our diffuse texture Okay, the diffuse texture uh, mid map will, you know, uh, be toggled, but we're going to always keep the same ratio of our shadow map. So we're always going to have like sharp uh, shadow, okay, not blur, not blurry that will uh, appear on our cube and without no crack on the hard edges, okay, like it would be like if we didn't do that, like on the edge of the cube here. And this time I'm going to select everything again and I'm going to flush my scene again okay since as you know if you have seen the sticky on the forum in this version of the exporter I am not deleting okay the scene directory since it caused problems to some users and they lose some data because their scene uh, name was not uh, entered properly <coughs> so just you know to be sure uh, when you want to do like a, or when you want to rebuild your scene, okay, move everything to the trash and start it from scratch again. And before doing this, actually, I'm going to show you a little trick, okay? So basically here, our light is like kind of gray, okay, if we go select it, uh, actually, no, it's white, okay? So as long as your, your light color is uh, like white or gray, okay, basically the texture that will be generated, okay, when the shadow map, it's it's a grayscale image. So there's absolutely no use of using RGB, okay, for exporting your shadow map. And by doing this, you're going to save a lot of space. 
okay? If your light was red, okay, don't do this because you really need the RGB, okay? <clears throat> but if your light is, in example, white, okay, what we can do is, I'm going to go here inside my big directory, and by default it's TGA, okay? But you can always change it. This time I'm going to use TGA, but if you want even like more compression, like less, even less space for your uh, shadow map, you can export them as JPEG. But I'm going to stick with TGA for now. No. Now, I'm going to go in image, mode, and I'm going to say grayscale. And I'm simply going to save. I'm going to check out my plane here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Image, mode, and grayscale. And you can see that there's absolutely no difference whatsoever, okay? There's the, the, the other components, like, are, are just useless. We only need to have, you know, grayscale image to have the exact same result. And also by doing this, here, since we're here, we can see that here is a little bit edgy, okay? One, one thing that I like to do is simply do a small blur, and here you can see that the edge are a lot more uh, smooth. I'm going to save. So basically now we've got two grayscale, two TGA uh, grayscale, compressed TGA grayscale. Like I was mentioning, if you even want like even more, okay, compression, even, even less uh, video memory for your uh, shadow map, you can simply save them, okay, as JPEG inside uh, instead of TG, and it would be like extremely small, okay. But you will have some compression that will be done on it. And in the case of TGA, well, there's no compression that it's done, so that's a good thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I already flushed my directory. Yes, I'm going to uh, export my scene again, and I'm going to run it again. And we can see that basically it's the same thing also. And we're using one component less, okay? The one third, actually. Because we're only using like one bit, okay, per pixel instead of three bit per pixel. And we can see that due to my the blur that I've done here, we can see that now we got like more smooth uh, shadow over the edges uh, of my shadow map. So basically this technique, you can use it for, for doing like many different things, okay? I'm using it for... Uh, shadow maps, but you can you can also do different things with that, okay? Like uh, whatever you can possibly imagine. And in combination with a full render, you can really have, you know, like a higher level of realism uh, in your scene, on your texture, okay, at almost no cost, okay? Compare that, compare if you were doing like the calculation in real time. So it's a really good technique, really easy uh, to use with uh, the bake script that it's inside uh, the SDK, okay, and <clears throat> I really suggest you to use it for your scene, because like an example for this plane, now we only have one, but imagine that you are using the texture, okay, like a hundred times, okay, for a hundred different objects, basically when you're exporting only one stone wall texture, okay, th this texture will be exported, and only one shadow map for every object will be exported, okay, so basically you're saving like a lot of memory, okay, and a lot of, of processing power, okay, to achieve the exact same result. And this is always what you should have in mind, okay, when you're building your scene, to make it look as good as possible, but have, like, as less as possible uh, space, okay, on your drive, in memory, uh, used. And using shadow map or full rendered map, it's really a good technique uh, to be able to optimize your scene and keep it at a high uh, visual uh, ratio. Okay, I hope it's, it's useful. See ya.